It's another Fourth Art Saturday video hop organized by Meridel Abrams. Please follow the description box below for the links to the other crafters and artists. Hello survivors, my family and friends. This is Roy from Pootsy Sweetheart's Guide to Life and other disappointing experiences with this month's video hop topic, history. Stay with me while we investigate the history of the purse. Several years ago, we had the opportunity to visit Amsterdam in the Netherlands. And believe it or not, there is a museum of bags and purses. It's a beautiful block right on the canal, one of the canals. And it has a collection of handbags going back from the very beginning to current trends. Unfortunately, the museum had to close during the pandemic and uh, did not reopen. So uh, this was a very special memory. The bags are from every generation. They're organized by era, by type. Some of the bags go back thousand years. Victorian bags, Edwardian bags, and modern day bags with uh, bags of celebrities. It's a beautiful, beautiful collection. The museum will be missed. Well, this $45 billion a year industry all began with the humble pouch carried by people from the prehistoric times, probably. And it really all was just a simple piece of hide of some kind cinched together with a cord from probably some animal sinew or something. And they would carry things that they felt important and they needed when they were probably out hunting, gathering, maybe rocks for their slingshots. Who knows? I wasn't there. You may know somebody who was. Uh, but this modest piece of hide gave birth to the modern day handbag. Then as we became more sophisticated as creatures, we um, created more attractive, more practical, more useful pouches and they became drawstring pouches, which of course gives birth to the drawstring handbag. And who knows what we what we carried then. Of course, this is before currency, so my trade with beads or shells, uh, jewels of some kind, things we've picked up along the way that look interesting. And the desire to make more fashionable purses and pouches to carry things with took off and became what it is today, $45 billion industry. This little bag is fun, was fun to make. I simply cut out a circle of fabric, used pinking shears to keep the fabric from unraveling, And I marked off spots where I wanted buttonholes and using the buttonhole attachment on the machine, sewing machine, I sewed buttonholes all around and then cut the buttonholes open and laced. This is just ordinary shoelace. So even as a demonstration, this is a fun little bag to have, but you can put almost anything in it. One of the first ever purses still has its uses. Of course, as our species is known to do, we <laughs> love to improve and embellish. And the simple little pouch first grew into a decorated pouch that men would carry 
when they go from hunting spot to gathering spot, from village to village. In the early days, women were not wearing pouches. They were, of course, relegated to the household and seldom went out, at least in the uh, peasant population. So the bags became very masculine and um, bigger, more secure. So I made a model of one here, decorated it with some feathers and wood, and some shells, and a fitting that we should be able to carry our very, very valuable trade items in a safe and secure way. So let me show you how I put this pretty little thing together. I love this one. This is just, a, this was a lot of fun. Rather than get some animal hide, it was easy to take a moth-eaten uh, wool felt sport coat and harvest some fabric from it. I got buttons, I got fabric, felt, got some great satin lining material, and I cut out a rough piece of fabric, almost square, rectangular, and I marked where I wanted the buttonholes to go, and again took it to the machine and made my buttonholes using uh, an X-Acto knife. Um, I just cut the buttonholes open, which will give me big enough openings for a fairly strong piece of uh, cowhide or bison hide. I'm trying to be a little bit authentic. I decided to practice making holes with kinds of instruments that the, the ancients might have had, including a steel awl. And I fashioned a sewing needle using some hardwood. And uh, of course, they wouldn't have had <laughs> the exacto knives and the uh, utility knife. But this worked out fairly well. I, w I was surprised how easy this was. And um, of course, at some point, though, it was time to give in to technology and um, use some of our more modern tools. So out came the crocodile, the crocodile, put some holes in the, the spots that I measured where we're going to sew the sides closed. It adds more pro protective uh, security of everything that's inside. So here I just use the needle and my make-believe sinew animal sinew or heavy vine to sew the bag together to using kind of a, a whip stitch very simple but uh, kind of authentic in a way and uh, that's how I closed this bag that was the closure and I, I I think it turned out nice. Now at the end of each um, cord, I put some kind of decoration. I have to add more to this as well and uh, make it even a little fancier. So when I have some giveaways, I'll probably use one of these fun bags to hold whatever it is I'm giving away. Here's a simple little drawstring bag. Well, I hope you enjoyed this uh, little fractured history of the drawstring bag, the first purse to become popular. Uh, I have some in progress. Here's a drawstring bag that's a little fancier. Sorry for the exposure. And I have um, a crocheted bag. All the cinching will be in the top. Sort of like a little goblet 
shape. I have another one that I've put away and finally have taken it out. I'm going to finish it. This is a work in progress. It's pretty big. It's big. Uh, and, you know, drawstring bags. They're the thing right now. Gift giving, and storage, and protecting things when you travel. Beautiful bags to give happy mail from Christy Biddleson. Uh, thank you, Christy. I saved this one. It's beautiful. Uh, the journey from uh, cow hide to, well, some kind of animal hide, uh, to purse. Thank you for sticking with me to the end of this video. If you haven't, um, please visit with the other artists and craftspeople uh, following the links and the playlist below in the description box. I'll do this because I'm bigger than I usually am. Uh, thank you again. And as always, stay well, stay smart, stay safe, do something today to make yourself smile, and bye for now.